Good afternoon. How are you? Are you well? I'm good. I'm pleased to be in Ketia. I think most Arsenal fans feel he's earned his, his new deal. He had, a, he had a good run towards the end of the season. He looks young and hungry and like he wants to be there up front. And he's, he's a good goal scorer. So I think we're happy about that. But I think like most Arsenal fans, very unhappy with the way that season ended. Very, very unhappy that Tottenham uh, nicked the top four place. And I've got to say, I'm looking at the football landscape in, in this country right now. And I'm thinking Arsenal will be struggling as things stand to get in the top six next season. Just going back to the Eddie Nketiah scenario, um, what about the fact he's got Thierry on shirt? Does that matter at all? No, I think Thierry's one of his heroes. I think he wants to aspire to be as good as Thierry Henry, and I like that kind of ambition. You know, when I was young, my mum gave me a postcard. It was a hippopotamus flying with a flock of seagulls with the headline, Ambition Knows No Bounds. And I think ambition is a great thing for, for young sportsmen. And I think that if Eddie and Ketia wants to show us that he wants to be the next Thierry Henry, great. I think he's got a certain cockiness about him in Ketia, which mm. I like. I think all top strikers need that. So I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with he's, you know, I don't think he's... I don't think he's good enough yet to be our main striker. I'm assuming we're going to try and get a big striker in. But I'm still, to be honest with you, fuming from having given away our last world-class striker to Barcelona. So don't even get me on that. <laughs> Piers, are you a, bit, a little bit concerned about Arsenal moving forward then? Because you look at what Spurs have done so far in the transfer window and you look what Arsenal have done yet and Ketia, which is I, I'm with you, I think it's the right decision. But still no one's yet to, to, to walk into Arsenal Stadium. Well, I'm not sure why they would. You know, if you've got so many other options, I mean, obviously Liverpool and City have already bought big. They've already massively strengthened their squad. I mean, the idea of City with Haaland up front is frankly terrifying. Uh, the only benefit to that may be that we get Gabriel Jesus or something, which would be good. But um, I think the problem is Arsenal are no longer considered to be a world force where the top players want to go. We're not in the Champions League. Um, we've really struggled for quite a long time now. And, you know, this whole concept of Arteta's process and trust the process, I'm not sure I do particularly. You know, this process has lasted two and a half years so far, and I'm not sure I'm seeing much improvement. We lost, How many league games did we lose last season? 13 in the end, I think it was. Um, you know, I mean, that used to be resignation stuff for an Arsenal manager mm -hmm. to lose that many league games. So I think Arteta is very lucky to still be there. And, you know, I, I had a massive problem with the board giving him a brand new three-year contract before the season ended, before he'd made top four, and right off the back of three consecutive defeats to you know, reasonably lower end of the, league, uh, of the division teams. You know, Palace, Brighton and Southampton. I was like, why would you do that then? It, it made no sense to me in terms of motivating Arteta to, to make that top four. So none of it at the moment makes me very happy. And I know there will be Arsenal fans going, trust the process just as they told me to trust the process with the latter years of Wenger, and that never came right. And I'm, I'm, I think the jury's out on, uh, on Arteta. I would have much preferred, personally, having Conte. If you could sack him right now, would you? Well, you've got to have an option. OK, Pochettino. Was, I, would you sack him and take Pochettino? Well, that's a, well, that's a very interesting call. I, I wouldn't be against that. I think Pochettino is, is definitely probably a better manager. I mean, the problem with Arteta is he's, he's, you know, he's a complete rookie. Um, would you though, Piers? Around... Uh, probably, yeah. I would actually, yeah. Yeah, okay. I've always been a fan of Pochettino. I think he's a good, very good manager. Uh, he's very experienced. But, you know, honestly, I would have preferred Conte. I think Tottenham have ended up almost by default with one of the great yeah. managers in the world. Yeah. And I love everything about Conte. And Conte will bring top players to the club. The Tottenham are going to be a lot stronger. Chelsea are obviously going to be spending big because the American new owners will want to prove a point. They've got buckets of cash. I think you're going to see Newcastle spending massively with all their Saudi oil resources. Um, I think you're going to see a few other teams nibbling around there. So you look at Arsenal, you think, I don't think top four is even likely. Um, but I'm more worried about top six. I mean, you know, what are we now? Are we a big club anymore? Or are mm -hmm. we basically consigned for the next few years to mid-table mediocrity? It's going to be very difficult if you can't get him a Champions League and he can't sign top players, I'm not sure how you change this rodeo, frankly. Okay. Just just yes or no, do you think Arsenal will stay up next season? <laughs> Shut no, up, I'm only Andy. joking. Um, <laughs> listen, before we uh, before we discuss what's coming up on your show on Piers Morgan Uncensored this evening, yep. we have to talk about the cricket. I know you're a massive cricket fan. Yep. What did you make of Johnny Bairstow's unbelievable innings against New Zealand to win the second test? And also, what did you make of England breaking the world record in their ODI against the Netherlands? 
Well, the second one I thought was, you know, not that significant because it's, it's, it wasn't against a top team. But I think the test performance was magnificent because I think that New Zealand are one of the top teams in the world. So I think that was fantastic. And Johnny Bairstow's innings was one of the greatest I've ever seen. I would put it second after Stokes's at Headingley. Okay. Uh, talk to me about your show, Piers. I know you've got coming up, I think on tonight's show, you've got Matt Fitzpatrick, of course, won the US Open. What a shot that yeah. was, by the way, on the last. And Caitlin Jenner as well. Yeah. So, yeah, double whammy for sports fans. And one, Caitlin Jenner, obviously, probably the best person in the world in terms of qualification to talk about this issue of trans athletes in sport because she, of course, used to be Bruce Jenner, Olympic gold medal decathlon winner for America as a, as a male athlete, uh, transition and has very strong views that trans women should not be competing against uh, women born to female bodies because of the obvious physical advantage. And she should know. She, she, she knows what the advantage is. So she'll be fascinating on that. You're, you're seeing now that in swimming, they've now banned trans women from competing against uh, in women's sport. And I think rugby league has followed. I think most sports will follow. I think any sport where there is a physical advantage they're going to follow this because it's clearly unfair. Um, and on Matt Fitzpatrick, I'm delighted to have him because I've actually played a couple of rounds of golf with him. One of the nicest guys I've probably ever met in golf and any sport. He's down to earth. He's a, he's a top bloke, uh, lovely family, brilliant story, obviously, with Billy Foster's caddy who had tried to win a major you know, on the bag for 40 years and finally came good. Uh, Matt is a great character. I'm going to remind him that the last time he played was in Los Angeles with Vinnie Jones, which in itself was absolutely comical as you can imagine but he's a very keen golfer mm. uh, and then halfway through we're, we're playing in our Hollywood course halfway through about three years ago uh, a golf buggy pulled up and it was Joe Pesci from Goodfellas oh, who, wow. who, who then proceeded to follow us round for nine holes telling us stories about Pacino De Niro oh. Scorsese and everything and, and uh, I just for a laugh I got him to wind up uh, Fitzpatrick by giving him the evil eye every, every time he tried to hold a putt and it threw, it threw Fitzpatrick up his game he could barely putt anything in the second second back nine so it was um, it was a hilarious time and he, he said it was the, the funniest day he'd ever had on the golf course I'm not surprised what, that. what are you playing yeah. off Piers? Uh, a very ropey 16 I haven't played a lot of golf recently but I, I love it and I play in very lucky to play on the Dunhill Links uh, every year up in Scotland with all the world's top players. Wow. It's, it's, I've got such admiration. When you when you play that pro am, you know, for basically for three days you're you're paired with a with a pro and they're they're playing for millions. And to be that close to these guys and watch how good they are. And when I, I played with Matt Fitzpatrick in the British Masters Pro Am, I could see then this guy, he's quite slight, you know, he's not that big a guy. But he was smashing it, 320, 340, you know, and the cleanness of his hitting. And I thought, man, this guy's going places. Mm. And now here he is, US, US Open champion. What an amazing achievement. Talk Sport Drive with Andy Goldstein. Monday to Friday afternoon from 4 on AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app, and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.